to today's study in Search the Scriptures. We are in the book of Numbers once again on chapter number thir- study number 13, excuse me, chapter 18, verse 8 through 19 and verse 22. If you have a Bible, you might want to get that out and follow along. If not, you can follow along on the screen in just a moment. We're going to attempt to answer two different questions. The first one is this, what does Numbers 18, 8 through 32 teach us about offerings that are holy and belong by right to God. And then secondly, what are the special features of the sacrifice that's described in chapter 19, verses 1 through 10? And note the use to which the ashes were put, and what are the dead works from which we need to be purified? Well, let's look at Numbers 18, verse 8 through 19, and verse 22 together. Numbers 18 and verse 8, Then the Lord said to Aaron, I myself have put you in charge of the offerings presented to me. All the holy offerings the Israelites give me, I give to you and your sons as your portion and regular share. You are to have the part of the most holy offerings that is kept from the fire. From all the gifts they bring me as the most holy offerings, whether grain or sin or guilt offerings, that that part belongs to you and your sons. Eat it as something most holy. Every male shall eat it. You must regard it as holy. This also is yours, whatever is set aside from the gifts of all the wave offerings of the Israelites. I give this to you and your sons and daughters as your regular share. Everyone in your household who is ceremonially clean may eat it. I give you all the finest olive oil and all the finest new wine and grain they give the Lord as the first fruits of their harvest. All the land's first fruits that they bring to the Lord will be yours. Everyone in your household who is ceremonially clean may eat it. Everything in Israel that is devoted to the Lord is yours. The first offspring of every womb, both man and animal, that is offered to the Lord is yours. But you must redeem every firstborn son and every firstborn male of unclean animals. When they are a month old, you must redeem them at the redemption price set at five shekels of silver, according to the sanctuary shekel, which weighs twenty geras. But you must not redeem the firstborn of an ox, or sheep, or a goat. They are holy. Sprinkle their blood on the altar, and bring their fat as an offering, made by fire, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Their meat is to be yours, just as the breast of the wave offering and the right thigh are yours. Whatever is set aside from the holy offerings the Israelites present to the Lord, I give to you and your sons and daughters as your regular share, It is an everlasting covenant of salt before the Lord for both you and your offspring. The Lord said to Aaron, You will have no inheritance in their land, nor will you have any share among them. I am your share and your inheritance among the Israelites. I give to the Israelites all the tithes in Israel, Levites, excuse me, all the tithes in Israel as their inheritance in return for the work they do while serving at the tent of meeting. From now on, the Israelites must not go near the tent of meeting, or they will bear the consequences of their sin and will die. It is the Levites who are to do the work at the tent of meeting and bear the responsibility of the offenses against it. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come, and they will receive no inheritance among the Israelites. Instead, I give to the Levites as their inheritance the tithes that the Israelites present as an offering to the Lord. That is why I said concerning them, they will have no inheritance among the Israelites. And the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Levites and say to them, When you receive from the Israelites the tithe that I give you as your inheritance, you must present a tithe, a tenth of that tithe as the Lord's offering. Your offering will be reckoned to you as a grain from the threshing floor or juice from the winepress. And in this way you also will present an offering to the Lord from all the tithes you receive from the Israelites. From these tithes you must give the Lord's portion to Aaron the priest. You must present as the Lord's portion the best and holiest part of everything given to you. Say to the Levites, when you present the best part, it will be reckoned to you as the product of the threshing floor or the winepress. You and your households may eat the rest of it anywhere, for it is your wages for your work at the tent of meeting. By presenting the best part of it, you will not be guilty in this matter, and then you will not defile the holy offerings of Israel of the Israelites, and you will not die. Numbers 19, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, this is a requirement of the law that the Lord has commanded. Tell the Israelites to bring you a red heifer without defect or blemish that has never been under a yoke, and give it to Eleazar the priest, and it's to be taken outside the camp and slaughtered in his presence. 
And then Eleazar the priest is to take some of its blood on his finger and sprinkle it seven times toward the front of the tent of meeting. And while he watches, the heifer is to be burned, its hide, flesh, blood, and offal. The priest is to take some cedar wood, hyssop, and scarlet wool and throw them onto the burning heifer. After that, the priest must wash his clothes and bathe himself with water. He may then come into the camp, but he will be ceremonially unclean till evening. The man who burns it must also wash his clothes and bathe with water, and he too will be unclean till evening. A man who is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and put them in a ceremonially clean place outside the camp, and they shall be kept by the Israelite community for use in the water of cleansing. It is for purification from sin. The man who gathers up the ashes of the heifer must also wash his clothes, and he too will be unclean till evening. This will be a lasting ordinance both to the Israelites and for the aliens living among them. Whoever touches the dead body of anyone will be unclean for seven days. He must purify himself with water on the third day and on the seventh day. Then he will be clean. But if he does not purify himself on the third and seventh days, he will not be clean. Whoever touches the dead body of anyone and fails to purify himself defiles the Lord's tabernacle, and that person must be cut off from Israel. Because the water of cleansing has not been sprinkled on him, he is unclean, his uncleanliness remains on him. This is the law that applies when a person dies in a tent. Anyone who enters the tent and anyone who is in it will be unclean for seven days, and every open container without a lid fastened on it will be unclean. And anyone out in the open who touches someone who has been killed with a sword or someone who has died a natural death or anyone who touches a human bone or grave will be unclean for seven days. For the unclean person must put some ashes from the burn, purif burn purification offering into a jar and pour fresh water over it. Then a man who is ceremonially clean is to take some hyssop, dip it in the water, and sprinkle the tent and all the furnishings and the people who were there. He must also sprinkle anyone who has touched a human bone or grave or someone who has been killed or someone who has died a natural death. The man who is clean is to sprinkle the unclean person on the, seventh, on the third and seventh days, and on the seventh day he is to purify himself. And the person being cleansed must wash his clothes and bathe with water, and that evening he will be clean. But if a person who is unclean does not purify himself, he must be cut off from the community, because he has defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. The water of cleansing has not been sprinkled on him, and he is unclean. This is a lasting ordinance for them. The man who sprinkles the water of cleansing must also wash his clothes, and anyone who touches the water of cleansing will be unclean till evening. Anything that an unclean person touches becomes unclean, and anyone who touches it becomes unclean till evening. Let's answer these questions now. Question 1, what does chapter 18, 8 through 32 teach us about offerings that are holy and belong by right to God? Well, the offerings that are holy and by rights belong to God are shared with the priests of God and their families. Even though the tithe went to the priests, the priests were not exempt from tithing themselves. They too were required to pay a tithe. Question number two, what are the special features of the sacrifice described in chapter 19, 1 through 10? And note the use to which the ashes were put, and what are the dead works from which we need to be purified? Well, the sacrifice of the red heifer was to be one that was without blemish, never been used under an oak, and was, of course, a female. It was a heifer. The sacrifice did not take place, however, on the altar in the tabernacle, but rather took place outside the tent, outside the camp, one could say that it was something that was slaughtered rather than something that was sacrificed. The ashes are the focus in the sacrifice. They were to be used for the ritual water of cleansing. And their use signified the purification of sin. Dead works are those works, I would say, that are of the flesh. And they don't have any... Uh, their motivation is not found in the things of God. They are those works that arise from our own self-righteousness and not from the righteousness of the Lord. According to Jesus, even some healing, some miracles, the casting out of some demons can even fall into that category. For it was Jesus that said that there would be those that would try to enter the kingdom of heaven based on healings and, and demons that they had been cast that they had cast out. But Jesus said, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. 
I hope that all of your works before the Lord are righteous works today. I pray that you would ask the Lord to speak into your heart, telling you what you can do for the kingdom of God. I pray that you are a tither, as was talked about in the initial portion of this scripture, for even the priests, even ministers, need to give of a tithe because it belongs to God. I hope this study today has been a blessing to you. Hope to see you next time for study number 14. God bless. Have a great rest of your day.